Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters and my brothers. Welcome to part 8 from the talk on magic, evil eye, envy, and possession of the jinn, and things like that. We are in the process of talking about Suleiman, the kingdom, the lies invented about him, and why magic and the belief in a belief in it is a disbelief, and why not believing in magic is an act of faith and uh, belief in Allah. One thing that people seem not to pay attention to, the earth, our earth on which we live, doesn't just have Muslims. We have people of all faiths and denominations and colors and cultures. And this is a beautiful thing that humanity can express itself in so many different ways. However, in each and every culture, in each and every culture, they have something called an exorcist. The exorcist is a person who is believed to be capable of bringing the evil and the devil from things. If someone is possessed, the exorcist will go there and take the jinn out of you. Sometimes people, they say, oh, this building is haunted. And then they call into exorcist, come here, please deliver your services. And tons of people on earth believe without any question that an exorcist has got that power. But the strangest of the things is the following. Throughout earth, wherever you go, for example, the Jews, they have their exorcists and they do ruqya when they read on people and do that. And they say and believe that the Torah, the Torah can do the job. You pay and the Jewish exorcist will chase the jinn out of you or put a spell or do something. Comes the Christians. The Christians, they go, you know what? I also can do uh, that. I can read Ruqya. I can treat you. I can kick the jinn out of you. The Bible can do that. It's the word of God. All you gotta do, pay money. And I will chase the jinn uh, that possess your body. And you can see this in a lot of conventions when they hold Christians meetings and priests and in big conventions and they read and they do that, that at the end they bring someone paralyzed or someone who is possessed and then the priest will put his hand, hallelujah, and he will say some uh, things like spells and the person stands up or wakes up or starts shaking, I am possessed. All that is an act is as good as go to Las Vegas and entertain people with it. it doesn't exist. Yet they say the Bible can do the job. The Hindus, the Hindus, they have their own exorcists who also do Ruqya. And they will tell you that the Veda, their holy book, can do the job. All you got to do, pay, and they will exorcist you until the cows come home. The Sikh people, the Sikh people, the Sikh will also exhaust you and they will tell you, of course we can do the exorcism. We can chase spirits, we can chase demons who possess you. Or spells or any magical spells that any person has put against you, we can kick them out. And the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, this is the sacred book of the Sikh, is a good job. It can do that. It's a word from God. All you got to do, pay and we'll kick the jinn from here until the end of time. Buddhists also they have they have their own exorcists and they can practice and they can chase the jinns and and ride the demons and do the supernatural and they tell you that the tripitaka can do the job and that's their secret uh, sacred job uh, books our Islam we the Muslims we also have exorcism from here until the end of time and we say the Quran can do the job just Hey, and I will exorcist you from here until back to the time of Adam, etc, etc, etc. So you can see that it's a lie. Because if a Christian believes that the Bible can cure someone who is possessed, and the Jewish does that, and the Sikh believe that, and the Hindus believe that, and, and they have stories to tell you from here until you die, don't you think it's time to wake up? This is why Suleiman, not only did he believe in Allah, but his entire and sole purpose of existence was to glorify Allah. He was, he lived to honor and be totally subservient to Allah and to his religion. Heck, 
He moved an entire world of an army to go about to show people what Allah had given him. Enough to raise people's curiosity to ask about who is this God that gifted this man with all this? But the shayateen, the rabbi, the priests, the leaders, and the influencers of the children of Israel back then, and our sheikhs today, they have disbelieved. The people of the book, instead of following what Allah had descended upon them on, in the Torah, and what they heard from what is recited in the Quran, they chose to throw the Torah and the teachings behind their backs, and follow the lies and rumors spread out by their corrupt rabbis that Allah calls shayateen. That's it. Do you think that you call a jinn, the jinn will respond to you? He doesn't hear you. And the only thing a shaitan and his people can do to you is whisper to you. So, the priests, now let's go a little bit deeper. The priests were telling lies to the people of, about magic. But not only that, they also were teaching people magic. Yes, in Jerusalem, back in time, the Jews, and until today, the Jews still believe in magic and they do practice it. At the time of the messenger, they were teaching people how to do spells. They teach people magic, as Allah said in the Quran. And this is a new element in the equation. They do magic. And then Allah goes a little bit further to uncover something, another lie that the children of Israel, the rabbi and the priests, were telling the people, the, the Jews, about how Harut and Marut also performed sihr magic. And Harut and Marut, as they read it in today, they say that these are two angels that Allah had descended on earth to do that, to teach people uh, sihr. You see, the human shayateen didn't just use Suleiman's kingdom as a source for their magic. It's magic they promoted and they used Suleiman. And this happened in al Madina. They went a step further. They took it all the way back to the Babylonian times. They went all the way to Babylon. And Babylon era was the time when Abraham, Ibrahim happened to be in Babylon. And that happened to be in Al-Iraq. The Jews claim that Abraham is a Jew. If you go on the internet and you type who is the first Jew and why. And you will hear what the Jews believe. They believe that Abraham who lived 1813 to 1638 before Christ. So it's almost uh, 19 centuries before that, before coming of Jesus, they say he is considered to be the first Jew. They say he is a native of Mesopotamia, which today is Iraq, a little bit uh, southern parts of Turkey, a little bit of, uh, you go a little bit Arabian, the northern part of Saudi Arabia, and you go a little bit of Jordan, a little bit of uh, Holy Land. And they say, look what they say about Abraham. This is in the, on the internet from the Jewish side that I got this. They say, Abraham is a native of Mesopotamia. He rejected the idolatrous way, idolatry, association to Allah, ways of his ancestors and the contemporaries, people who lived in his time. He was the first person to use his own cognitive abilities to discover and recognize the one God. And this is 100% true. This is what the Quran says. It is in their books. And then they carry on saying, he then actively publicized his newfound monotheistic belief among his fellow citizens. And this is 100% true. 100% that's what they say and that's why the Jewish people since they believe they carry this message they say Abraham was the first Jewish of course Allah has responded in the Quran ما كان إبراهيم يهوديا ولا نصرانيا Abraham was neither a Jewish nor a Christian he just was an upright person his own belief as the Jews described but because for example if Abraham said لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله we would say Abraham is the first Muslim that's exactly how the Jewish think of it. 
This Abraham, the prophet of Allah, Abraham lived in a Babylon, the Babylonian era, and that and that great where he was is a great dangerous uh, thing. Why? Because they linked Abraham as the first Jew who has lived at in Babylon. So what did happen in Babylon that is so important to the Jews? Well, that's what the Quran says. Harut and Marut, two angels who taught people magic. That's what they used to teach people, that there are two angels from heaven that came down to teach humans how to perform magic and people performed magic and that's how magic came to earth. So you see what I mean? They went all the way pre Suleiman to Babylon to establish magic so that later on when they talk about Suleiman that he is a magician, it works for them. But this is not what Allah says in the Quran because it's impossible that Allah who in the Quran countless times has said that whatever comes from him is guidance to us. Allah never ever descends misguidance. Misguidance comes from a shaitan, not from Allah. This is one thing. The second thing is that Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ ظُلْمًا لِلْعِبَادِ Allah never ever wishes dhulm, transgression, oppression, wrongdoing to his people. So if someone tells me that Allah has descended two angels from the sky so that they teach people magic, and then in the Quran he tells me that magic doesn't exist and never ever succeeded, uh, succeeds no matter what, they never can accomplish anything, then I have a huge contradiction and a huge problem in Allah's Islam. So what did happen here? Well, it's the origin of the names of these two people and the way they punctuated the Quran and the, uh, the way they voweled the, the Quran. If you want to learn about these two entities, anywhere you go on the internet, they will tell you the following story. They will tell you, and it's true, the, and this story is not a, um, it's not something to laugh about. It. In our books of Hadith, our scholars have authenticated this story and said that it is true, it has happened, and that's why they believe in it 100%. They don't tell you a lot about it because it's hard for people to accept it, but it is there. And the moment you start studying the Quran and you come to this ayah, the 102 in the Quran, they will tell you the story about it. They will tell you the following story. One day, the angels up in the heavens were looking at us as humans and how we disobeyed Allah. All right. So they went to Allah and said, Ya Allah, don't you, how, how come you are so patient with these losers down there? They, they disobey all the time. They sin all the time. The, of course, the angels don't talk to Allah like this. But that's what is in our books. So Allah tells them, okay, it's okay. If, if you feel that the humans are doing that, why don't you pick two of you, any of two of you, and I will send, the, send them to earth and see what they do. Since you claim if you are on earth, you would behave better than the humans. So the angels went ahead and they decided on an angel called Harut and Marut. Our hadiths say that Allah sent down Harut and Marut. He sent them just to test them. Okay, so they morphed into a human shape. All right, the moment they morphed in the first few days, they saw a beautiful woman. Oh, and suddenly, because now they're given a human capabilities, they said that they got especially attracted to her and so much aroused by her. But they hid that from each other until one point they couldn't contain it no more. That's it. They're going to explode. So one of the two angels said to the, his friend, he goes, do you feel what I am feeling? The other one goes, yeah, did you see that? The man, the, the other angels, they go, how about if we go and try to pick her up, sleep with her? You go, okay, let's go do it. So they go to the woman. <laughs> this is in our books of Hadith. I'm not inventing this. I will tell you the source a little bit, but wallahi al-azim, it's in our books of hadith. So they went to her and they told her, you know what, you're such a sexy woman, you're making our blood boil, please sleep with us. 
She, being smart, she told them, look, I will not sleep with you until you give me the, the name with which you raise up back in the heaven, you climb back in the heaven. Oh, okay. And uh, now it's a surprise because she could see them in their true form as angels. And they said, no, sorry, we can't give you that one. We're not going to give you the name, the password that we climb with to heavens to enter the realm of heaven. She goes, okay, then I'm not sleeping with you. Bye. So they go, ah, sex. See, when we get aroused, it's difficult. It's, it's, it, it messes up all our hormones and everything. People rape women for that. People rape children for that when, when they don't control it because it's controllable. But some of us are weak, but uh, in most cases, people control. But anyhow, so second time they went out, please let us sleep with you for the love of Allah, let us sleep with you. She goes, I will not do that until you give me the password with which I can climb into heaven. They go like this. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell, we'll tell you, we'll tell you. And they told her the password. And when they told her the password, they slept with her. And when they slept with her, she wanted now to climb into heaven. I don't know how humans can climb, but anyhow. She, as she was climbing into heaven, she got turned. Take this. And it's hadith authentic. What well, lights crazy. She got turned into a planet. And that planet is what today we call Jupiter. <laughs> when, you, when you translate the names. And they said the hadith of the messenger, whenever he saw Jupiter, he would curse it. Why? Because back in time, she was a woman and she did wrong. What about the two angels? What happened to them? Well, the two angels, Allah suspended them between heaven and earth. And they are like that until the end of time. And on judgment day, they'll be punished. This is one version. Wallahi, this is one version. And this hadith narrative is reported and authenticated by Al-Hakim. What this Al-Hakim did, and why it's important, Al-Hakim one day, he came after Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari and Muslim had conditions for each and every hadith. Each and every hadith in their books had to fulfill certain conditions. It has those conditions, and they are the toughest conditions. It will be in there, okay? That's fine. So Al-Hakim went ahead and decided to use the same conditions of Al-Bukhari and Muslim on every other hadith to see which one qualifies but didn't get put in Bukhari Muslim. And he found tons of them, so much so that he gathered seven huge volumes of hadiths. And that is why the book of Al-Hakim is important because it contains hadiths of Bukhari of Muslim that should have been there but was, were not included even though they fulfilled the permissions of Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith is there. Yes, this hadith is there. And not only there, it's also authenticated by Al-Hakim and another scholar called Al-Bayhaqi a great scholar as well, At-Tabari, and few other uh, scholars of hadith. They all authenticated it. You, 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 you see that? In another narration, it tells that the, these two angels, also the same, almost the same thing, the, the angels laughing at humans and how we disobey Allah and things like that. Allah tells them, okay, pick the two of your angels, and they picked Harut and Marut. Harut and Marut come to earth and they have all the capabilities of humans. And then, of Allah's law is that they should not drink wine, they should not fornicate, they should not commit shirk, they should not, they should not. It's a list of you, do, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. When they came to earth, and a couple of days they kind of like, and suddenly they discovered wine, and how beautiful it is to drink. Oh my God, how nice it is to get drunk, and not completely drunk, but just enough to feel high, to feel warm. And then... <laughs> They started, they started chasing women and boys. I mean, angels do that. You see why our Islam is really deeply troubled with, this, uh, with these kind of stories. These kind of stories it was, is what the children of Israel were teaching the Jews 
about that Harut and Marut had a secret potion about magic that they used to use and that magic there is what Suleiman found out later on and he built his kingdom with so let's look for what Harut and Marut brought and then what Suleiman has so that we can build our kingdom that's what it is I'll talk to you a little bit about the true identity of Harut and Marut and why they are not angels. They cannot be angels. And it's impossible for them to be angels even though the Quran's vowels, when you read them, they are read in a manner that says they are angels. But that's an error. Allah has a habit when he, especially when he brings a name that is not Arab, for example, like uh, Solomon, he calls him Suleiman. Suleiman has a meaning, as I said earlier on. Min Salim, meaning he's uh, intact, he's uh, healthy, he's fine, and he uses uh, an endearment uh, term, and so on and so forth. So Allah has used in the Quran, for example, two kings, Talut. Remember the children of Israel when they asked the Prophet for them, please ask Allah to send us a king, we fight with him. Okay, Talut was the king that Allah sent to the children of Israel. While Jarut was the tyrant king that oppressed people all around. All right. So what happened is, when we look at these two names, they are not names of people. Because the names of people in the Bible are completely different. They are Jewish names. But what Allah did is this. He summarized the personality of that person for that event and named him as such. Talut in Arabic, the verb Tala, is when something takes a long time to happen. All right? And Jalut from Jala is when somebody roves the earth, gets all places to earth. And here we understand that Jalut was a tyrant king that used to go with armies around the lands, conquering and taking the wealth of people. And he was Jala fil Bilad means he went ahead and walked everywhere uh, in, in, in the cities. Talut meaning he spent, he didn't come. It's a king who came after a long wait. And that is how now we know the meanings of these two names. Talut, a king who came after a long absence because they didn't have a king to fight with. And, and this Talut, if I have to call them in English, I would say the king whose absence has been long because he never came and uh, things, is here to fight the king who roved, who walked, who went uh, spread around in, on earth causing mischief. That's how Allah names them. Now, when I go to Harut and Marut, the same rule applies. Remember Talut, Jarut, Harut, Marut is the same sounding of nouns. Harut comes from the original word of Arabic, Hara. Hara means to succumb and to fall and break down. And Allah has mentioned this in the Quran, and I will not mention the ayah because it will take us long. But Allah has spoken about two mosques when one of them is built with good intention, and this will sustain and remain. But the other one who was built to harm the believers, as in Surah at Tawbah, like Surah 9, Allah says, In Hara bi fi Jahannam. In Hara meaning it got completely succumbed and fell down in hellfire. So Harut was the name of the first king in Babylon who invented magic, who started his kingdom and built it on magic. But his kingdom, as Allah has named him, did not stay long and the kingdom was lost. Right after that came another king and this king's name is Marut. Marut, the same thing. In Arabic, Mara is when something disappears while shaking and fast. I will give you an example. Sometimes, if, for example, you have your phone in your hand and you're doing something, and the phone, uh, the phone uh, the, uh, your smartphone, falls from your hand, and you see it disappearing quickly in a sewer. And you, go, and you can't catch it, but you see it, it's gone fast, and it's trembling, you know, like shaking. That is Mara. So Allah is talking about the first kingdom that was built on magic, didn't work out, and it got completely destroyed and succumbed of Babylon. And then came second king, his name is Marut. He tried to carry on the kingdom on magic and also it didn't work out. 
these two kings have opened like schools to teach people their art of magic and they told people do not disbelieve the disbelief here is not to believe in Allah or not because kafara in Arabic is to cover these two kings told their disciples or the people they taught when you go out in the streets don't link what you learned here to yourself you should promote us because they wanted more people to learn the magic so that the kingdom becomes stronger and they can scare people a lot and that exactly what happened the disciples always linked whatever they learned to where they learned it from Harut the king Harut and the king Marut what did these two kings teach these two uh, Harut and Marut they taught him something peculiar how to divide between a person and their spouse or the man and his uh, partner really you learn magic only to cause problems between people not to enrich yourself not to create a castle for yourself not to create trees that give you money you learn magic just to separate a person from their partner this is it well guess what that's what magic is used today in the Muslim world or in this corrupt world they always use this to separate between a person and their husband and it's widely spread in the Muslim world especially in the Arab world do you think Allah would send two angels from the heaven to teach people magic and what the angels will teach people will help them separate between a man and his wife what kind of God is Allah to send angels to teach people to cause mischief on earth and break societies and families it's not Allah this is not how Allah functions the truth of the matter is this the two angels <coughs> excuse me my voice is uh, it's eight hours of recording <laughs> the two angels uh, sorry the two kings Harut and Marut they built their kingdom upon false uh, sorcery and bewitching and magic but the only way for them to generate income is to deal with public and the best way which is safe to cover their traces is to go to people and say okay I we specialize in separating people and as is always the case somebody always wants to get rid of the husband of the wife uh, I'm jealous uh, um, my family didn't work out I want to break their family and the sihr that they applied in Babylon was a uh, threatening sihr if you don't do the sihr you see I go or the spread uh, the rumor spreads around is that Harut and Marut these magicians and their disciples are writing spells to break families I have this said I'm go oh my god so how do I counter that they go well if you want to counter that go and write a spell to protect your family so I go and write a spell to protect my family I go to the magician he goes yes I can do that always remember the setup and everything and I go please 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 put a spell on my family so that no bad spells happen to us they go okay I'm gonna give you a spell for one year for one year and they go yes this is renewable because people get very sneaky you want to always keep your uh, spell up to date it's like your phone operating system you always got to keep it up to date on the other hand they will write a spell for someone else to go and destroy a family so in one way they make money and on the other way destroy they make money protect they make money and that is why Allah mentioned that in the Quran that their concentration was purely evil and they worked with the one thing that is in abundance in every city humans yes humans and that's why Allah mentioned it no one can break between you and your partner nowhere nowhere no they, they can't do that it's impossible because Allah will not send down angels to teach people something that is in itself disbelief it means Allah has sent down this belief is this something anyone who accepts this is, is, is shaitan himself if Allah is gonna reveal this belief to people to, to cause them to disbelieve in him why does he do that to test them shaitan is not enough he needs to do something else of course not this, the other thing is Allah will not descend nor reveal magic to be taught and 
influencing the negativity of people's lives and relationships. Ya Allah, if you're going to send down magic, why don't you send us good magic that helps us not disobey, that helps us obey you, become better people? Why do you send a magic that breaks families? You see what I mean? If magic was descended by Allah upon his messengers, the, the, the angels, this means that magic has become a guidance to humans because Allah has promised that anything that comes from him is guidance. Speaking to our dad, Adam and his partner, he said to them, if a guidance comes to you from me, from Allah comes only guidance. Allah never descends misguidance. I really don't understand how our sheikhs has accepted this. And then Allah carries on and he said, وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدِ These two kings, Harut and Marut, except that they put a condition. They said, we will test you. إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ الْفِتْنَةِ We certainly are a test. We will test you and we will scrutiny you. Do not, therefore, cover where you learned magic. It's like when you make a contract with somebody and you tell him, look, we are watching you. Whatever you do, we are there. So don't you go and hide where you learned it from. So my dear sisters, what the Allah says, he goes, فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَ So they learn from these two kings what they separate, cause separation between a person and their partner. Our sheikhs, the books and everything, what do they say? They say, ha, they separate between a man and his wife. Yes, but the, 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 that, that's not correct. Because if it is to separate between a man and the wife, why not between a wife and her husband? Why it's only a man and his wife? But the true meaning of the ayah, Allah is not talking only about husband and wife. What Allah is talking about is that it happens between any person and their partner. It could be business partner. It could be a friend of yours. It could be anybody, any two that have a relationship. These people use the magic to create problems in front of and before and between people. That's the only thing. Yet in the 14 translations that exist in the Quran.com on the internet, all of them, they say that the people learned from these quote-unquote angels only to separate between a man and his wife, as if magic was only to separate between two married people. Fourteen translations, all of them say the same thing. And the third thing is that they just copied what the Arabic books said without taking a minute to study the ayah and put it in the big context and picture that it is. Well, of all things that a person can do with magic, they only learned from angels allegedly sent by Allah, descended to earth, on how to, how to separate a man from his wife, not how to make money, build castles, become noblemen, live in for centuries, not building beautiful bodies, not to have sexual power, only to separate a man from his wife. Is this worthy to disbelieve in Allah for? Something ain't right. Allah is all for love, compassion, beautiful families that live in great loving vibe. Allah has prohibited fornication and sex out of marriage to protect the family. He's not going to send down two angels to teach people how to break families. He's not. Allah, we live in, uh, as Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, amma yaquluna uluun kabira. High exalted is Allah. He is the most high, far above from what they say. Liars. Liars, liars. Because Allah, ma yuridu Allah, wa ma Allah yuridu dhulman bil ibad. Allah would never ever wish injustices upon people. So as I said, the real meaning of the separating between two, a person and their partner, it could be just by creating rumors, visual tricks. A, a woman disguises herself like the wife of the other one or the husband disguises and they say, come, look at that spell, see that person, that's the husband. Ambiguous spells, potent love potions, hate potions, the get pregnant potions, abortion points, feel good over potions, health problems. The, world, the list is endless in dealing with people. So the thing, my dear sisters and my brothers, that at that time there, 
In order for those magicians to make a living, they banked on few elements and all of these elements were social ones. Protect yourself and your family services. Hurt other services like hurt a business, partner, friend, competition. We can write a spell for that. Conquer the love of your life services. Get rid of your spouse services and things like that. But again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he says, and they will not harm anybody without Allah's permission. And of course, we can't do anything in life without Allah's permission. You can't burp if Allah does not authorize it. So anyhow, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they learn from them what harms them and does not benefit them. And then Allah issues a ruling. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمُوا And they, the children of Israel, know very, very well because it's mentioned in the Torah and I read it to you earlier on that sorcery, talking to the death and all these things are haram. لَمَنْ اِشْتَرَهُ Whoever acquires, i.e. learns magic with the intention of harming people, even if magic doesn't exist, but at fooling people in thinking that they can write spells, Allah says, these people won't have a good share in the last life, i.e. on judgment day, they will go straight away to hell fire. Why? Because Allah says, how vile is that for which they sold themselves, if only they knew. I.e. just by doing the magic that doesn't work, these people have sold their souls and themselves to hell fire. And if hell fire is going to buy something from you, you can rest assured it is not going to be something good that is going to give you back. So please, 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 always keep in mind, magic doesn't exist. Magic in the minds of people can take colors as well. So the, to make magic more sinister, more scary, more frightful, they say black magic, voodoo, and all that kind of stuff. And some, even, uh, some others go to necromancy, and I will explain what necromancy is in a little bit. So black magic, pink magic, green magic, white magic, red magic, any color of magic is as void as magic itself. I, uh, the other day I was watching a documentary in Africa, in Nigeria uh, specifically, where they would uh, traffic women to Europe to work as prostitutes poverty there and there is no way so they offered a woman that look we can take you to Europe you can work and you can have a nice life blah 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 of course all these are promises 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 just shaitan teaches them and uh, then they say and if you go there and you work you gotta promise one thing the person who's gonna sponsor your departure and going to uh, Europe you need to pay them for example 20,000 pounds now do you agree to that? She goes, yes, and I've seen this, and there is a documentary online. You can go on YouTube and search it. And then what the, the, once they agree with the person in Europe who's going to traffic the, the poor lady, they take her to a voodoo, uh, black magic uh, magician. And that magician is supposed to put a black uh, spell from the black magic on her. Uh, I forgot what uh, they call it, Josh or Joe or Joe How Java, something or Jaja or something like that. And then the, this spirit, if once she goes to Europe and she doesn't pay the money to the other one, she'll be possessed and her life will be ruined, and the, the devils and demons will, 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 will. And they went to there, of course, they had hidden cameras and everything, just to see how these uh, charlatans act. And it really is scary as you see them prepare it. Not because they're going to get any results for that. No, 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 no. It's just how to what. And they go there. He went there and he had some uh, chicken legs and he had some uh, beads and he had some things and he mixes them and he puts uh, like uh, charcoal or some kind of thing when he lights fire it, bring, it brings uh, smoke and then they bring it to the girl and they cover her head and have her breathe in all that smoke and what they tell her is this what you have inhaled inside you is the spirit of Jaja whatever it is the god of all or the demon that they are putting in her and they send them to Europe now this one here after she did her pledge and everything the team took her side to her home gave her some money uh, good enough to maybe last her a year and they said this whole thing is a nonsense it's a lie we just were doing a documentary uh, 
And then they went back to Europe to interview the prostitutes who work there and they lead a dog, a dog is far better treated than them. And they ask them, why are you here? Why are you still working? And these ladies are fully captive, even if the pimp is not there to reinforce anything, they cannot run away. Why? Because of this jaja, because of this magic, evil, black magic spell. They can't, they are scared to death. And of them, people who claim to be Muslims. There is no black magic and there is no pink magic and there is no yellow magic. There is absolutely no magic. For magic to, to hurt somebody because just the jinn are going to do it. If Allah allows a human being today to work with the jinn to do something, then Allah has failed the promise of Suleiman to give him a kingdom that he, is not, he will not give to somebody else. And absolutely Allah, لا يخلف الميعاد. Allah never ever breaks a promise he made. I spoke about the necromancy. Necromancy is uh, in all simplicity, is considered the practice of, uh, of calling upon the demons who appear as spirits. And once they appear as spirits, they, you can establish communication with, with the dead. Sometimes you see them in movies, they put a candle in the middle and then, the, and then they hold the hands of each other and whoever is playing the magician or the priest or whatever, they put in all darkness and she goes, okay, spirit, if you are here, manifest yourself and that kind of lies. And then they say, the necromancer will say, oh, he is here. Oh, uh, can I speak to Joanne? Who is Joanne? Jo uh, the mother of Alice. And then they will hear a voice like, oh, how are you, my daughter? I'm doing fine. And the girl says, yeah, it's my mother. How are you, mom? How are you doing there? Are you good in the here after, after your death? She goes, yes, I'm eating a lot of grapes and bananas. Suddenly they don't feed us well. We don't eat meat. I'm just kidding. Because the whole thing is a hoax. It's not true. No one ever can communicate with the dead. No one. Jinn, no jinn. Devil, no de Excuse me. <clears throat> devil or no devil. Nothing. You gotta excuse me. It's eight hours of talking. <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't exist. So, uh, and this necromancer or this science of necromancer, sometimes they call it a death magic. It's, 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 it's usually used in black magic and witchcraft and things like that. And the thing is, there is a huge art of passing magic and necromancy. And I call that uh, art because it really is ingenious how someone who is as idiot as someone who claims to be a magician. They never have a postgraduate degree or they are, far, they always are people who are ignorant. They sit there and intelligent people, rich people, uh, all kinds of people go to them, give them tons of money, asking them to do something that the other one cannot do. It's, this is an art. It's like someone who draws nothing in a canvas and puts it there and people buy it for millions. And for me, like Picasso right now, I find his drawings really funny. To me, they mean absolutely, it's a square in rectangles and things. But people are paying tons of money for them. And I sit there and they go, why would they do that? It's really, or maybe they are just buying the painting for the name. I will now talk about the last point in this uh, talk here. And after this one, I close, inshallah. A human jinn possession. Can a jinn possess a human being? And of course, the simplest of answers is absolutely not. The jinn cannot inhabit or possess or hijack the brains or speak up with your tongue or all that kind of things. They do not happen. I had somebody once said to me, oh, this one is a jinn and he is from uh, Bosnia. And the jinn starts talking like Bosnian. I said to him, do you understand Bosnian? Anyone in that room understood Bosnian? He goes, no. I said, how did you find out that he's from Bosnia? He goes, because he said from Bosnia. I said, let's say because a person spoke Bosnian, he's inhabited by the jinn. He goes, who else can talk uh, Bosnian like that? And I really looked at him in the strangest way that actually someone who reads the Quran and prays and claims to love Allah and believes in this kind of nonsense. 
it's widely sadly it's widely accepted and believed in all kinds of religion mind you it's not just in islam but everywhere people believe that someone can be possessed and until in the 21st century we still hear somebody especially in the muslim world where someone goes to exorcist like uh, perform exorcism on somebody who they, they are say, they say is possessed the sheikh or the person or the exorcist goes there starts reading quran one of the techniques to kick the jinn out of the human the non-existent jinn of course out of the human is to beat them up so many people have died because of the beating of this sheikh so many people have been uh, have been killed they are hit and they hit with the very tough sticks and canes until the person dies or if they don't die they break and do this. why because the, by beating the jinn he comes out curse them and curse them to eternity and once they when you talk to the sheikhs and things like that they tell you of course of course there is in the quran allah has spoken about the jinn in the quran and he said they can possess humans really they go yes haven't you read about the people who use riba and usury what allah said about them and i go okay go ahead they say those who eat a riba usury they do not stand they do not stand and this is talking about judgment today they do not stand up except as the standing of he who is being beaten by a shaitan from the touch they say you see you see a shaitan can touch a human being and i go okay but it doesn't say that it can inhabit it it can touch it even though it, it can't shaitan cannot touch a human being remember the only thing he can do is he can see us whisper to us and of it and they say see, no, no 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 it's clear the shaitan can touch a human being and possess them and cause them pain grievous and harm and to these people i say the usage of this ayah clearly talks about something that will happen on judgment day not in this life because in a jinn inhabiting a human being is impossible a we're not the same type of material the way the jinn are built the way their body if they have a dna if they have a for they sure they have a formation their body is not compatible our with ours they are not air that we breathe in they are not water that we drink in they are physical bodies that eat drink peep and poop they are human so they cannot come they, they are not spirits to come and inhabit my brain that's a allah uses this example or this example of what people see to give an example of what will happen we know that uh, epileptic fits that the epilepsy in the sight of allah is a shaitan is a shaitan so what allah is talking to them is this when one of you has got either epileptic fits or is gets uh, because of a disease especially what they have called when they have disease when they are sick and sick, and they cannot move they can they can hardly stand why because the virus inside them is hurting them allah tells them anyone who eats today haram money and the usually the riba is not when you borrow some some money from somebody and they increase the amount you return that's not what allah is talking about the riba that allah is talking about here is for the business people and the quran is clear about this it's for business people those who hide merchandise so that the price increases and then they sell it to people with the high prices that's the riba that's not what allah has prohibited not borrowing money and increasing but anyhow so what allah is talking about is how people shall stand on judgment day if you want to see how a riba person is going to stand up the person it's usually all you gotta do is watch a sick person who cannot stand on their two feet exactly like that and always remember the servant of a shaitan i called you i invited you and you responded to me the only thing a shaitan can do and i invited you to commit sin you responded positively to my call you committed sin so there no magic nothing 
And as Allah said in the Quran, whatever those people who claim to do magic to hurt people, all they have invented is nothing but a trick of a magician, and the magicians shall never ever succeed wherever they go. Please keep in mind that Allah is the only one who creates. Allah has stated in the Quran, you the human being, you the being there. What has deceived you about your glorious God? Who has designed you and then designed you like uh, before the real creation. And then he shaped you and then he adjusted you in any form he wanted. He created you, he assembled you, then he made you into a human being. When someone's parents are black, the person will not come with red hair and green eyes. Allah will assemble him close to the genetic of his parents or her parents. Therefore, the process of, of creation is different in the jinn and in the human being. Finally, I will close with this ayah, my dear sisters and my brothers. Allah Taala mentioned four things that only Him can do, and sadly, these four things have been given to magic and magician, and this is why the kufr exists. Allah speaks about Himself, about Him. Thumma razaqaku. Allah has created us, and then what? And then He has provided for us. Thumma razaqakum. Then. You meet to come thumma yahyikum. Then he causes us to die, and he will resurrect us again on judgment day. Then Allah says, "Hal min shuraka ikum man yafalu min zalikum min shay?" Can any of you associates that you associate with Allah do that? Of course, Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the answer is no, and that's why he answers, "Highly exalted is Allah, the Most High above what you associate with Him." And don't be of the majority that believes in Allah and add to their belief another layer, association to Allah. Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ And most of them don't believe in Allah without associating with Him. Magic is an act, it puts you either as a disbeliever or as an associator with Allah, mushrik. The next day or the next time somebody comes and says, oh, I'm going to put a spell on you or someone is, uh, my son is sick because of a spell of a sihar or an envy or black eye, or, sorry, not black eye, or evil eye or my son is possessed, know that this person is an associator with Allah and bordering kufr because depending on their intention, if they believe openly that what's happening to them is because of the jinn and this is the outer effect of magic, they have disbelieved even if they perform salat. I pray to Allah these eight hours have answered the question of the uh, sister who has asked the question, can someone with black magic or magic ruin our lives? Can someone with evil eye look at you and something happens to you and you fall down? Can someone envy you? The answer to all these things is no, they do not exist. Just like Allah doesn't have a son, magic doesn't have a result. I pray to Allah what I said will find a way into your heart. Please feel free to ask me a question when you hear these uh, talks on either uh, YouTube or send them on WhatsApp. And one more uh, and one last thing. Next time someone talks to you about magic, point them to my talk. I'm sorry, it's eight hours. It's taken me weeks to prepare, but this is not a simple task. I, I can answer in two words, but it never goes away. And I pray to Allah, these eight parts will help you understand far better about magic and what it is. And when in fact, it is nothing but a charlatan playing, playing tricks to get to your pocket and steal your money. One more time, this is your brother Abdul Salam. May you all be good and I pray to Allah to safeguard you and help you be the best of who you can and love those who are close to you and spread love around. We need it much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.